whether you have a gas start diesel, you're looking to buy one, or you're just curious. We're going to go through and show you how these gas start diesel engines work, hopefully answer some of your questions, clear things up, and hopefully teach you something you didn't know before. I pulled the sheet metal off the 450 here so we can go ahead and take a closer look at what makes these engines tick and what makes them so unique. So we'll start with the diesel side since that one is a little bit more simple than the gas side. So on the diesel side right here you have your throttle. So if you wanted to manually engage your throttle when you're not at the seat you can do so. Down is idle and to gain RPMs you would pull it back against the spring. Flow of fuel. So the flow of fuel on these it comes from your tank into your water fuel separator, out of your water fuel separator through the base to your auxiliary filter, which from the factory would have been a wound cotton yarn looking filter. After leaving the auxiliary filter, it then would come out this line into your primary pump. Now this primary pump, all it does is provide pressure through the last filter and provide pressurized fuel to your injection pump. So after it leaves the primary pump, it will come into your final fill filter, which is a cartridge style, out of here into your injection pump. There's a single plunger in here, the main plunger's underneath here, with four individual plungers underneath this cover here that provide the fuel flow to each of your injectors. This injection pump is gear driven, right off the timing cover here, uh, if you pull this front plate off, then you'd be able to adjust the timing of the pump if you wanted to. There's a needle in there. I believe you can go 20 either way, 10 or 20 degrees either way. So that's the diesel side. We'll go ahead and transition over to the gas side. All right, it's quite a bit to go over here. So we'll start with the sparking system first. So you've got your distributor here, which is different than a gas model. This distributor is a counterclockwise rotation, not a clockwise rotation. Your spark plugs, for the most part, will not be reachable unless you pull your manifold off and take manifold, which isn't too big of a job. It just takes a little bit of time. The carburetor. So, the carburetor is a fixed throttle. There is no throttle, per se, on this. Your adjustment, your throttle, your RPMs are controlled by how much air you let in the carburetor, which is adjusted by pulling the carburetor off. There's a butterfly in there. You can either adjust it up or down to adjust your mixture to either lean it or richen the mixture to adjust your RPMs. Choke. So on these 100 series, the choke is on the outside with a cable. On your litter series, there's going to be a choke on the back side with a linkage it hooks to it but you'll still have a little I guess it's called lever indicator on the front that you can adjust it manually if you had to which I do often. Let's go ahead and dig into the workings of the manifold here. So on the front of the manifold uh, you have two wires or you should have two wires sometimes there'll just be one but underneath this cover is a round contactor that turns so when it's on the gas side, it turns so that there are two brass connectors that make contact between this post and this post. A lot of times that connector goes bad or the disc gets worn out and goes bad. And when you put it on the gas side, it does not let the voltage travel from this wire through to this wire to go to your coil. So if you see them wired from here to this post, or one wire or them wired to the same post, it's a good indicator that this underneath here is bad. This is a cross shaft that goes through the head, so when you kick it to either gas or diesel, it goes through here, you have a little linkage and moves that moves up and down. When that moves up and down, there's a fork on the back side of this manifold here that moves up and down and when it does that there's a butterfly that opens and closes inside this manifold and I'll take a, a cut of a manifold so you can see better on the back side. Also when you change back and forth between gas and diesel you have another linkage down in here that moves. What that does is it opens and closes your needle seat or your needle in the seat in your carburetor. So on the diesel side that needle is locked into its seat so that gas cannot flow into the carburetor. On diesel, it's left open so that gas can flow freely in your carburetor. 
To really help understand how these engines really work, we're going to go ahead and look at the head here. So if you'll notice, there are three sets of valves. So as usual, the larger one is going to be your intake, the small one is going to be your exhaust, and this smaller one here is actually going to be your what you call a starting valve or compression release if you wanted to call it that. I'll go ahead and start with the intake valve. So the intake valve, nothing from this side really to note. However, uh, when we look at the manifold here in a little bit, you'll see that on the port for the intake, you have a large one, then you have a small one here, about the size of my finger. So when you kick it to the gas side, there's a butterfly inside the intake manifold that will close, basically cutting off the airflow to this port in the head, forcing the air to go through the carburetor and then through a smaller passage, which is this one right here, up through the intake manifold into here, and then that same passage goes into your ports here for your intakes. So that is how the gas gets into the engine. And then when you kick it over to diesel, that butterfly opens, in theory, cutting off the flow of air through the carburetor and then resuming normal airflow into these big ones. For the starting valves, this chamber is actually a lot bigger down in there than you would think. And the point of that is when you kick it to the gas side, this valve opens and creates more space inside your combustion chamber, therefore lowering your compression to allow the engine to run on gasoline versus diesel. What it also does is when that valve opens, it exposes your spark plug. So your spark plug will go right in here inside of this passage, and then that's how you get your gas to ignite. These ports you see here are for your injectors, and I'll go ahead and flip the head over here so we can take a gander at the other side. With this being a bare engine head, there's a few things you're not going to see. So one of them being that down inside your injection bores here, you will have injection pre-cups that would go down in there followed by sealing washer. And then your injector would go down in there as an o-ring that seals against the bore and nuts that hold your injector down tight against the pre-cup and seals everything off. You have your intake exhaust valves here with guides and you have a small recess for your starting valve and I'm going to go show you um, on an assembled head but when this starting valve is all assembled there should be a small cap on here that rides on the end of the valve stem the other engine I have when they assembled it they did not put them on there so I'm going to have to take it off and put those caps on there to make sure that when you switch between gas and diesel for the starting valves here that that depresses the valves appropriately. In the side of the head here there is a hole and there's a linkage that would come up into here and then there's a separate uh, like a rocker arm set up that runs along here that has a they call it a dog but when it pushes it depresses all four of your starting valves at the same time and I'll go show you that here in a second when we look at a fully assembled head. Looking at the bottom of the head here, I'm going to go ahead and show you the two places I've seen them crack so far. Potentially there's more places for them to crack, but all the heads off these tractors that I have personally seen have been cracked in these two places. So the first being between your valves, between your intake and exhaust valve would be a nice crack there, which may or may not be visible to the naked eye depending how bad it's cracked. Uh, you can spend, I think it's about 30 bucks now, for some red dye spray to check it yourself if you'd like, or get it mag tested. That will definitely show it between your valves. And the other place I've seen it is this hole right here in your water jacket. So this hole is for one of your head studs, hole for head stud, hole for the water jacket. There will be a crack that extends out this way about an inch. Yeah, it's typically what I've seen on both of these heads. And on this head, this is off an MD. And I can't remember where this one was cracked, but I can tell you because when they finished um, welding it back up, so they grind it out, put it in their furnace, heat it up, and use your cast iron rod, and actually like, kind of melting it, but weld it back in. But when they did it, uh, this hole right here for my head stud needs to be drilled back out. So I can tell this one was fixed here, and some of the metal was filled in right into here. So... This one for sure was cracked right here at least, 
and it looks like this one was fixed up as well so this one had to crack here too so those are the two places I've seen them crack this engine when I purchased it was rebuilt by a machine shop so you'll see a few things that aren't exactly stock on here like the grade A nuts and washers on the head studs but anyway so as I was talking about you have your dog which this one has been repaired I've seen quite a few of them repaired it's got a weld on it right here but this would go to the linkage that would be uh, actually attached to this and this rides up and down to control your intake manifold as well as your carburetor settings but this little clevis pin here would link into this arm when this arm rotates it pushes up which then in turn puts cam action on the top of your starting valves which are my finger in there right there so as I was saying there should be a cap on top of that that would sit on there be a flat surface so as that uh, rocker rotates down doesn't matter where it is it's got a completely flat surface so it can rotate and be able to have constant pressure but right now without it it really is putting pressure on an odd point on the end of the starting valve it's actually barely catching on the stem so I'm definitely gonna have to get that repaired before I try and run this engine for the first time taking a look at the back side of the intake manifold here as I talked about on the carburetor you have your little arm here which controls the seat of your needle in the needle seat closes it to start and stop the flow of gasoline you got your choke lever here on the back side and then this one here sits in the linkage that goes up and down the side of the engine which flips back and forth goes over center there's springs um, in the end caps here which help it to go over center and stay but this also opens and closes your butterfly so right now it will be on the diesel side because the butterfly is open when we kicked it to the gas side this butterfly would close therefore the air would go in down through your carburetor back up through into these passages here on the bottom of your manifold through out these small holes and then through the small channels into your intake valve like I showed on the head So let's recap here on the gas side. So when you go to start the tractor, you pull the changeover lever back to the gas side. The butterfly inside the manifold closes, forcing the air coming in from the intake to go through the carburetor, draft up fuel and air, and then go into the head. Also, the needle in the seat and the carburetor is allowed to move to allow fuel to flow in, as well as the contactor disc inside your intake manifold also rotates to allow connection between this wire from the switch to allow voltage to flow through to your coil.